Convertible bonds give bondholders the option to exchange the bond for a specific number of shares of the issuer's common stock. For an investor, bonds are considered safer than stocks. They give the investor a steady, regular cash flow and protection of the principal, which will be returned at the bond's maturity. Their market price fluctuates according to market interest rates and the issuer's credit quality, but generally do not go too far from the face value. Bonds are also more senior in claims to the firm's assets when it comes to liquidation. The return on stocks, on the other hand, depends mainly on the company's performance, outlook and its ability to generate cash flow. The dividends can be unpredictable and irregular and there is no protection of principal. Stocks are popular with investors seeking higher returns as the share price can potentially appreciate a lot due to company performance. So, as you can see, bonds offer investors downside protection, but there is limited upside as the principal is returned on maturity. Conversely, stocks offer invested unlimited upside in its stock price, but no downside protection as the price could eventually end up as zero. Convertible bonds can seemingly offer investors the best of both worlds, that of unlimited upside, yet with downside protection. If the company's stock price does not perform well, the convertible bondholder can treat it as a straight bond. She'll collect the regular coupon payments and get back her principal on the maturity date. If the company's stock price does well, she can exercise the right to convert the bond into common stock and thus participate in the equity upside. From this point on, the bondholder becomes the shareholder. She'll receive dividends and is able to trade the stock like any other shareholder. Because the conversion provision is valuable to bondholders, convertible bonds can be issued with lower yields compared to otherwise identical straight bonds. From the issuer's perspective, convertible bonds offer two main advantages. The first is reduced interest expense. Issuers are usually able to offer lower coupon rates because of investors' attraction to the conversion feature. The second advantage is the elimination of debt if the conversion option is exercised. Existing shareholders, however, may not be too happy as the conversions can be dilutive to their shares. Refer to the lesson on earnings per share under FRA for more details. Let's go into the specifics of conversion. The conversion price is the price per share at which the bond may be converted to common stock. For illustration, Let's set the price at $40. This price is determined at issuance. The conversion ratio is the number of shares received for each converted bond. It's the par value of the bond divided by the conversion price. So let's say this bond has a $1,000 par value. Its conversion ratio will be 25 shares per bond. The conversion value is the market value of the shares that would be received upon conversion. If the market price per share is $50 at the point of conversion, we multiply this by the conversion ratio of 25. The converted shares will be worth $1,250. The conversion premium is the difference between the conversion value and the bond's price at the time of conversion. So in this case, if the bond price is $950, the conversion premium is $300. Conversion parity occurs if the conversion value is equal to the convertible bond's price. So if the convertible bondholder made the conversion at this point in time, it would make no difference to the investor's net worth. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.